Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. There are several ways to mask images in Photoshop. Let's see how easy it is to use the Frame tool, and then we'll take a look at some additional solutions specifically intended to keep our documents as flexible as possible. I'll tap the K key or choose the Frame tool from the toolbar, then select one of the shapes from the Options bar and drag out a frame. On the Layers panel, we see a layer with a frame icon to the left of the layer thumbnail. We can use the anchor points to resize the frame and drag within the frame to reposition it. Then we can use the contextual taskbar to generate or import an image. I'll navigate to this image and then place it. Now in the Layers panel, we see the placed image content in the layer thumbnail. In addition, the image was automatically converted to a smart object and scaled to fit proportionally within the frame. To make changes to the frame, I'll click on the Frame thumbnail in the Layers panel. Now I can resize the frame independently of the content. If I select the layer thumbnail, I can drag to reposition the content of the layer within the frame. If I hold the Shift key and select both the frame and the content, then the frame and the image reposition together. We can also make these selections directly on screen. Double-clicking within the frame toggles between selecting only the image content or both the image content and the frame. With the image selected, we see the thin outline for the image content and we can reposition the image content within the frame. When I double-click again, the frame and the layer are selected and they move together. Clicking on the edge of the frame displays anchor points to resize the frame. I'll double click to select both the frame and the image content, then use the contextual taskbar to center the content in the frame. We can also choose to fill the frame proportionally and fit the frame to content. If I want to resize the image with more control, I can select it and choose Edit and Free Transform and transform the contents. Because the contents were converted to a smart object on import, we can transform the image multiple times without losing image quality. All right, I'll double click and then choose to fill the frame proportionally and then reposition both the frame and its contents. Because the image was imported as a smart object, it's easy to replace the contents of the image. With the frame selected, we can choose Replace Image from the contextual taskbar. Here I'll choose Import Image, select a different image, and choose Place. We can also drag and drop content from the Libraries panel to replace the contents. On Mac, we can also replace the contents by dragging and dropping another image from the OS or another application. I want to point out that with the frame layer selected, I can drag and drop the image anywhere and Photoshop will replace the contents of the smart object. If I have a different layer targeted in the Layers panel, then I'll want to drop the image content over the frame in order to have Photoshop automatically select that layer with the frame and replace the contents. And if I don't want to replace the contents, I'll make sure that a different layer is selected and then drag and drop the content outside of the frame area. To add a rectangular frame around a single layer or multiple layers in a document, we can target the layer or layers and choose Layer, New, Frame from Layers. We can change the name and enter the size of the frame that we want here, and we can always resize the frame after applying it. If I had had multiple layers selected, Photoshop would have converted all of the selected layers into a single smart object and then drawn the frame around all of the layers in the smart object. Let's select a different shape. Notice that the mushroom layer is still targeted, but if I draw the frame over this layer, Photoshop will add the frame to that layer. We can add a stroke to a frame using the contextual taskbar or the properties panel. I'll select a color and then change the size and we can select an alignment option. Now to duplicate a layer and its frame, we'll want to target the frame in the layers panel and then we can choose Layer, New Layer via Copy. 
to duplicate only the image content, we can target it in the Layers panel and use the same command or use the shortcut Command-J on Mac or Control-J on Windows. All right, let's select those layers and then tap Delete to delete them. If I ever want to remove the frame but keep the layer content, well, first, there has to be at least one other layer in the document. Then you can target the frame and right-click within the frame thumbnail on Mac, that's a control click, and then choose Delete Frame. I'll choose Frame Only to only remove the frame. To remove only the layer contents, we can target the layer thumbnail and then right-click to the right of the layer thumbnail and choose Delete Layer. I'll choose Yes to delete the image content and leave the now empty frame. All right, let's choose Edit and Undo because depending on the layers in your document, you might get a different result. I'm going to select the frame and the layer and reposition this layer so that the content overlaps. Then I'll select the layer thumbnail and this time when I right click and choose Delete Layer and click Yes, because the frame was overlapping the other layer's content, the frame was applied to that other layer. All right, I'm going to choose File and then Revert to revert the file. We can drag out empty frames in a document by dragging them in this area where there are no layers below them. We could also toggle off the visibility of layers in order to drag out empty frames within a document. And then to combine a layer and a frame, we can use the Layers panel to drag and drop a layer onto the empty frame. All right, let's talk about converting shapes to frames. In this document, I've used the polygonal shape tool to create a shape. We see the shape layer in the Layers panel and the shape properties in the Properties panel. Now to convert the shape to a frame, we could choose Layer, New, convert to frame. And now we can go ahead and generate or import an image. However, converting the shape to a frame does have a disadvantage. Once the shape is a frame, we can no longer access the live shape properties. So we can't change, for example, the number of sides on the shape or add rounded corners or change the star indent value. So let me go ahead and revert the document. To keep the live shape properties, instead of using the frame tool, I'll want to create a clipping mask. I'll choose File and then Place Embedded to place our image as a smart object. Now, with the image layer positioned above the shape layer in the Layers panel, we can choose Layer and Create Clipping Mask. Once clipped, the image only appears where there is content on the layer below. I can select the Move tool and reposition the image independently of the shape, and I can target the shape layer and reposition it independently from the image. I can Shift-click to select both layers and reposition them together as well. And we can always select the shape layer and then use the Properties panel to re-edit the shape's properties. There are additional advantages to using a clipping mask for one, you can clip more than one layer to a base layer. They can contain various types of layer content, including adjustment layers, and we can apply layer effects to the clipping group. But they are a bit more complicated than the frame tool, and they tend to make the layers panel more complex. All right, let's talk about using text for a mask. With this type layer selected, I can choose Layer, and then New, and we can convert it to a frame but converting to a frame converts the type layer to outlines so that the text is no longer editable. So let's undo that. Instead, I'll reposition this image layer above the type layer, and just as we did with a shape layer, I'll choose Layer, Create Clipping Mask. The image only appears where there is text on the type layer, and we can still reposition either the image or the type independently of one another, Plus, we can re-edit the text at any time. And one more scenario, here we have a bird that I drew with a pen tool. With a pen tool selected, I can use the options bar to convert the path into a shape layer. 
Once it's a shape layer, we can choose Layer, New, and Convert to Frame. But again, once we've converted it to a frame, we can no longer access the individual points on the path. So let me revert the file. This time, I'll select the path, then select the layer that I want to mask, and I'll choose Layer, Vector Mask, and Current Path. This duplicates the path and it adds it to the layer as a vector mask, and the path remains editable if we want to make a change to it or reposition it. We could even add a clipping mask to this layer or a layer effect. Excellent, I hope that provides some insight as to when to use the frame tool to keep things simple and when we can use clipping masks and vector masks when we need to keep our documents as flexible as possible. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.